Now, a recap of what we know about solving um, related rates problem is one, you need to uh, know the given rate, you need to know the given equation, and you need to know what you need to find when you're solving related rates problem. Now, on the equation, sometimes the equation or the formula is given in the related rates problem, but most often the formula is not given. So you need to know or you are, you're supposed to memorize some of the geometric formula that you used before in geometry, like the area of a circle, volume of a sphere, area of a square, or volume of a cube, and so on. So for these examples that I'm going to show you, it's going to be more challenging than the first few examples that we did on our first lesson on related rates, because this time the equation that we are using is a lot more complicated than uh, the ones that we used before. So the steps in a related rates problem is once you have your equation, you take the derivative or the implicit derivative of both sides with respect to time, and then simplify your equation, start substitution using the information that is given in the word problem until you find your solution. So that's the steps that we're going to be working on today. And uh, our first word problem for today is the sliding ladder um, problem. Now in this word problem, a ladder 10 feet long rests against a vertical wall, and if the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at a rate of one foot per second, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? Now, there's so many walls, there's so many ladders, so how do you um, um, simplify this problem? To simplify this problem, you need to uh, draw the diagram according to the problem. Since we are working with ladder and wall, here's my wall and here's my ladder. So the ladder is leaning against the wall. The ladder is 10 feet long and it's sliding down the wall um, at a certain rate. And that's what we need to find here. What is the rate of change with respect to time of the ladder sliding down the wall? Now we are given the base of the ladder which is 6 feet. Now all we need to do is to find um, the rate of change of y, which is your wall, um, when it slides down um, like right here. So this is our diagram. Now, just like what we did, we need three things to be able to solve a related rate problems. The given equation, since we're working with a right triangle, and we need to find the missing side of the right triangle, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem we know is hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus legs squared. And all we need to do is to use that formula, which is not explicitly given in the problem, and solve our related rate um, problem. So we have 10 squared is equal to x squared plus y squared based on the given problem. Now the given rate is the change of x with respect to time. So this rate of change is given. Um, and it's moving to the left at the rate of one of foot per second. So that's your um, rate of change, the given rate of change. What we need to find is the rate of change of the ladder going down the wall, which is dy over dt, given that x is equal to six feet. Now, as I've mentioned, from the previous problems that we worked on, we are given the formula, and then all we have to do is take the derivative of both sides, simplify the equation, and then we're done. Now, in this case, you need to add another step. So you cannot just use the same step right away that we did before. We need to add this step right here. We need to find the value of y. Since x is equal to 6 feet, we can uh, find the value of y by using the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, it's just a uh, missing side problem, which we know very well is solvable using the Pythagorean theorem. So this is my triangle. This is my um, setup. I have a hypotenuse and the other leg of the triangle. I just need to find y. Using the Pythagorean theorem, I found out that y is equal to 8. Now, I have completed my variables, and it would be a lot easier for me to solve a related rates problem if we have more given. And now we have x, now we found y, now we, we can do the other steps that we um, usually do in solving related rates problem. Now we're ready to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of the equation with respect to time, we have 100, derivative of 100 with respect to time, derivative of x squared with, with respect to time, derivative of y squared with respect to time. So implicit differentiation, 
0 equals 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt because they have different variables with respect to time. So now we have to substitute. So now that we have set up our derivative function, it's easy to solve the related rates problem because we have x, we have y, we have dx over dt that we need to substitute in our equation. And that's what I did. I need to find dy over dt. So using algebra, I know that I can have dy over dt by itself because that's the easiest part of the problem here. So we have uh, uh, 12 plus 16 dy over dt. Get rid of 12 and 16 by dy over dt by subtracting 12 on both sides and dividing both sides by 16. dy over dt is negative 3 over 4. So therefore, the ladder is sliding from 6 feet at the base at the rate of negative 0.75 feet per second. So you know you're doing it right because it's sliding down. So it's obvious that your rate of change should be negative because it's moving downwards. Now, I'm going to uh, summarize what I just did just to make sure that um, you'll be able to understand what, we, what happened in this um, related rates problem. So here's my illustration. A way better illustration than the one on the board. This is my word problem. I'm not going to read it, but this is my um, equation or my illustration. So the ladder is sliding down the wall. We are given the um, length of the ladder, and we also we are also given the base of the um, ladder when it's sliding down the wall what we need to find is the value of the rate of change of y so y is our vertical line and x is our horizontal line now the equation is not given but we know we're using the Pythagorean theorem and I set it up as 10 squared is equal to x squared plus y squared we have given rate which is dx over dt at 1 feet per second we need to find the cha uh, rate of change of y or the vertical line with respect to time when x is equal to 6 now I know what 6 is, or what I know what x is, I can find y by using the Pythagorean theorem, um, solving the Minsky side of the right triangle. y is equal to 8, using the Pythagorean theorem. And I've shown you how to solve it on the board. Now I'm ready to find my uh, rate of change using implicit differentiation. So uh, derivative of the left-hand side and the right-hand side, derivative of 10 squared with respect to time, derivative of x squared with respect to time, derivative of y squared with respect to time. That's supposed to be a D. Um, I accidentally uh, typed C. But anyhow, you, you got the idea. So derivative of constant is 0. Derivative of x squared with respect to time is uh, 2x dx over dt. And the derivative of y squared with respect to time is 2y dy over dt. Now, substitution method, since I know my x, I know my y, I know my dx over dt, I can solve for dy over dt. So I have this equation that I'm going to simplify. So t dy over dt by itself, using algebra, I have negative 3 over 4 feet per second. So I know that my ladder, when it's sliding down um, from 6 feet, with a base of 6 feet, has a rate of change of negative 3 4 feet per second. And that's how I solve my sliding ladder problem. Okay. Next problem. My next problem is the water in a cone problem. So now we have a new geometric uh, shape that we are going to use in this related rate problem, and that is a cone. And in this case, my problem is that the water runs into a conical tank at a rate of 9 cubic feet per minute. The tank stands point down and has a height of 10 feet and a base of 5 feet. How fast is the water level rising when the water is 6 feet? So here's my cone and it's point down. I have water in my cone, my, my, my conical tank, and its height is 6 feet. I know that my conical tank has a height of 10 feet with the base of 5 feet or with a radius of 5 feet on the base of my conical cone. So here's my summary right here for the cone, and I'm going to use this later on. I'm going to show you why I need this ratio, height of the cone and the radius of the cone. Now the, we need to find the equation. We need to find the given rate, and we need, I mean, we need to know what the given rate is, and we need to know what we need to find. And what we need to find is how fast this water is rising uh, from this uh, conical tank, and that's what we need to find. That's why it's dH over dt the relative of height with respect to time. Now, the equation of the 
the equation is the volume of a cone. And in this case, it's not explicitly given. So you need to know the formula for the volume of a cone to be able to answer this word problem. And the volume of the cone is given by the formula 1 third pi r squared h. Now, in this type of problem, in this type of solution, we are going to, I'm going to show you an, an added step before you can take the derivative of both sides. What we are going to encounter here is when we take the derivative of both sides, we're going to have two variables in one side of the equation. And we need to um, be able to uh, use a technique on how to change my two variable formula into a one variable formula and this is how I'm going to change it. So this is one technique that you also need to learn to uh, solve um, rate of change problem. And here's how we change this formula. I'm going to change the formula for the volume of the, co the cone into a one variable formula. So here's my original formula, two variables R and H. What I'm going to do is to have my formula using one variable either R or H. So in this case, I'm going to use ratio and proportion. I know that the ratio of my radius and height is 5 is to 10. So I can use this ratio to change my formula into a one variable formula. So R is to H is equal to 5 is to 10. I'm going to have R by itself. So R is equal to 1 half H using ratio and proportion. So Cross multiplication, simplify your fraction, I have 1 half h. So now r is equal to 1 half h. Now, if I'm going to plug the value of r into my equation, my um, formula will have one variable in the process. Now I have v is equal to 1 third pi times 1 half h squared, which is the value of r from our solution, and h is just the same. So now you'll notice we only have one variable on one side of the equation. So all I need to do is to simplify my function. So you have v equals 1 third pi times 1 fourth h squared times h by squaring my 1 third h. Simplify your equation. My new formula for the volume of the conical tank using this ratio is 1 over 12 pi h cubed. Now you will notice I don't have two variables. I only have one variable and I use ratio and proportion to uh, produce this formula. And now I'm ready to take the derivative of both sides. So I have my formula, implicit differentiation, um, set aside the constant, take the derivative of h cubed with respect to time, so implicit differentiation on the left, implicit differentiation on the right. I have my new derivative function, which is dv over dt is equal to pi over 12 times 3h squared, which is the derivative of h cubed with respect to time, times dh over dt. Now, by substitution method, I'll be able to find dh over dt at h equals 6 feet. So at h equals 6 feet, plug in the values, uh, value of h, which is 6, find, um, replace the value of dv over dt, which is 9. Use your algebra to solve for dh over dt, and dh over dt is equal to 9 over 9 pi which is, when you use a calculator, is equal to 0.318. To show you a more graphical illustration of this word problem, I uh, have here my cone. So the water cone problem. I'm not going to read the word problem anymore. You know that we have a conical tank, and it's given the height of the tank, which is 10 feet. The radius of the base of the tank is 5 feet, and I know that the water started at 6 feet, and that's the given um, numerical value for our word problem. The question is, how fast is the water ri rising from 6 feet of water from that conical tank? So the equation, the given rate, and what you need to find, the given equation is not exactly given because you need to know that you're working with the volume of a cone. And the volume of the cone is given by this formula, and the given rate is the rate of change of uh, your water. So you have the volume of the water is at 9 cubic feet per minute and you need to find how fast the water is rising at 6 feet. So now that you have your uh, summary, we're ready to solve the equation. And as I mentioned, the formula that we're using has two variables and what we need to do is to change one of the variable 
uh, into H or into R to have one variable in our formula because it's a lot easier to work with derivatives of a formula with one variable. So to do that, we need ratio and proportion. We know that the radius and height is 5 is to 10, so that's our ratio. Have R by itself, and R is equal to 1 half H. I'm going to substitute the value of R to my original formula for the volume of the cone. Now I only have one variable, which is H. So now my new formula is V equals 1 over 12 H, or pi H cubed. Now I'm ready to take the derivative of both sides. Derivative of V with respect to time, and the derivative of the other side with respect to time. Set aside all the constant. You have 1 over 12 pi, derivative of h cubed. And the derivative of h cubed is 3h squared dh over dt. And this is your new derivative function. All you need to do is to replace all the variable uh, from the given information of the word problem and solve for dh over dt. And using algebra, dh over dt is 0.318 feet per minute. So therefore, the water is rising at this particular rate. And that's the summary of the word problem that we just did a while ago. Water in a cone problem.